Hello everybody, I'm Brasscoin and welcome to my channel. Scarlet and Violet are officially out and available to play. They are in full swing and with a new game and generation comes new legendaries. And this one does not disappoint. This one actually has the most fun legendary unlock that I have seen since Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald with the Reggie Trio, where you had to go on a little side adventure to go and find those Pokemon. That one happens here and I completely love it. Some of them are a little bit aggravating to find but we're going to do a guide and tutorial for you today on how to find all eight stakes that you're going to need to unlock each of the Pokemon. We're going to do a four video series on this and today we're going to be starting off with the Dark Grass Ruinous Legendary going by the name of Wu Qian. I probably slaughtered that because Chinese and Japanese is not my first language quite obviously but we're going to go find it. This is the snail Pokemon that you've been having seen or heard a lot of rumors about through Riddler Coup, Central, and all those guys. So without further ado, let's dive into the video and show you guys where all of the stake locations are at as well as the seal. Alright, here we have the beautiful and expansive overworld map of the Paldea region that we now get to explore and discover the contents within. If you will notice, there are four lighthouses, one in the north, the south, the east, and the west. And if we draw a line connecting these four lighthouses, we get a sort of quadrant. These are where the locations for a given color of stakes are going to reside. Today, we're going to be working on the purple stakes so that we can get Wu Xian. And I just wanted to mention real quick that the line will be interchanged with green, most commonly in Google searches, and gold with yellow. The colors are all messed up and pretty close to each other. But all of the purple stakes, except for a few, are going to be in this bottom right quadrant. Some do spill over to the bottom left into the gold or yellow category. But we're going to start off right here next to our seal, the place where Wu Xian actually is residing. And we're going to show you where stake number one is because it's actually right on top of it. But there you see the seal. If you come across these prior to finding some of the stakes, you're going to have all four chains. It takes two stakes to open each one of these chains. So if you come back after finding three stakes, you're going to see that one of the chains has fallen off and there are still three remaining. Uh, so two to make one of these chains disappear. We are going to climb using Coridon's abilities to get up here to the top just above that seal to get to stake number one. Now these do take a little while for registering that you clicked A to pull them out of the ground and then a little black text box will pop up saying that you initiate that there's an ominous black stake driven in the ground will you like to pull out the stake of course because that's how we progress now I do want to mention real quick that there is no possible way except for spoofing finagling or otherwise hacking cheating or some combination thereof to get all of these stakes without unlocking all of Cory Idon's ability. You will need Climb in some instances, and you will need Surf in others. And to my knowledge, you have to get the ability to swim across water to get the ability to climb up walls. So, take that for what it is. You do need to have pretty much all of Cory Idon's abilities in order to be able to do this. The next one, we're going to fly to the uh, Pokemon Center into the South Province Area 1. Should be like... Poco Loco or something like that is the town name. I forgot to look at it when I popped up. But it's actually going to be up on South Province Area 4, up on top by this little spring up here. We'll grab that. There's also a Gimme Ghoul location up here. I don't feel the necessity to do a Gimme Ghoul video. You're going to find these coins all over. They do respawn, just putting that out. But I might do a video anyways, just kind of going more in depth about it. But I'm pretty sure another YouTuber's already beaten me to it. But this is stake number two. I'm actually going to skip the location for the next stake real fast um, and go to stake number three. Um, we will be coming back to this area for the last stake. Oh, Las Platos is the name of the town we should be next to. Here we have this little spiral thing that kind of looks like a snail would be lying on its side. Uh, you could fly to Las Platos or, you know, since we're already here for this stake, we're just going to fly. Now I'm actually going to go past one of the stakes that we'll be getting last. It's going to be off to our left by that big tree that you see just in the corner there. Um, but And you, there is a glim of purple right there. Uh, you might be able to see it. Yeah, there's purple off in the upper left hand corner there. That's going to be another stake. I kind of forgot about this one as I was making the video and didn't want to go back and redo the entire thing just to get that stake in the right order. And it kind of works out, not going to lie, to just come back and do that stake later because it is a pretty close fly point 
to our seal to go directly into battling Wu Xian. So we're just going to climb up to the top of this snail part here, this little curvature of a mountain that just spirals upward. Um, it looks like you could be able to get up to the top of it without climb. I think you would need Coriodon's a leap ability at the very least, but it's going to be easier just to approach us with climb anyways, because there is one for sure that I know of that you do need climb. So up at the very tippy top, we have our stake. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this one you could get with just his mega jump ability. But there's also another gimme ghoul up here, and you can kind of see the seal off in the bottom right, or sorry, the upper right hand corner next to that beam of light. So for the most part, these are going to be around the seal uh, that you're trying to get to. The next one is going to be over here by the bridge, uh, by the bridges. We're gonna come and grab this one. There's actually a dam right there. Um, I approached it originally from the other side because I saw it and just jumped across and somehow luckily made it. I don't know how, but this is a much better option, just soaring from the top of that one and we'll pretty much just drop right down on that stake, no problem. So I believe this should be stake number four. I lost count in the blue video, so I'm going to go with stake number four for this video. And the next one is going to be just a little bit to the north of where we're at. It did take me a little bit to grab this one. Some of these stakes are really well hidden and blend in quite, quite awesomely. But once we grab that, we're going to fly to our next location here. You can just jump and soar across it if you have all the Cory Iden's abilities, as you should. So you can just jump pretty much straight across and glide the rest of the way. Might have to climb a little bit towards the side here. Um, but it's pretty easy to get all of these stakes. Some of them, like I said earlier, are a little bit more difficult to find, but um, easy to get to for the most part. There's only like two stakes that I found that are really difficult. But here is stake number five. The next one is going to be more towards the eastern provinces. Um, I think we actually, in all technicality, do fall into the east province area. The boundaries for the provinces are pretty loose. Like, they seem to follow landmarks more than anything else. So the next one is going to be on this grassy part over here, which for all technicality is in the east area, but it still falls in the southeast quadrant somehow. So we'll go ahead and I don't have any fly points. You probably do, at least the Pokemon Center directly in front of us could cut down your journey a little bit, um, but it's a pretty quick journey. So we're just going to walk over there, fly, climb, swim, whatever we need to do. Um, it's not too bad to get there. Shoot, it might even be just as fast to follow the trail. I think I might be taking the more difficult route here. But eventually you will need to climb to some degree or glide to get across the canyon gap. But yeah, totally not necessary to climb up the mountain in my opinion. Um, we're going to veer off to the left here. And I'm going to have to climb up the wall a little bit to get to the stake. But we should see it come into view momentarily. Um, they don't have the greatest load distance, but yeah, see, we are pretty close to it, but it still didn't load. Uh, it just doesn't want to populate until you're really close to it. And like I said, we are in East Province Area 1 by technicality because we are on the green part of the map instead of the desert looking part. So here is again that location. Uh, my flag was a little off, but if you go to that flag location and look around a little bit, you are going to find this as it is a lower vantage point so just doing a quick 360 from that location is going to get you to the right place pretty easily if i remember to count correctly this should be stake number six and we will be moving on to stake number seven in just a moment as soon as our text box says so all right stake number seven is going to be by the grass gym actually i don't know why i did that but oh well all right, so here we have Artisan. We're gonna be actually by this Pokemon Center right up on a little ledge. So we'll fly directly to that Pokemon Center and then just climb up a little bit to grab that stake. So 
go ahead fly to Artisan West Pokemon Center. Then we'll be able to just pretty much turn around and jump up a mountain and we'll have stake number seven. All right, so turn to the left. There's our little knoll, our little cliff. Climb up that and there is stake number seven. Looks like this one probably could be uh, reached without climbing ability. Um, but you would probably need the Mega Jump ability at the very least. Let's go ahead and pull that stake. Let the little black screen fade away for some reason because they couldn't just do an animation of that disappearing. Um, and let's move on to the last stake, stake number eight. That one is going to be by Los Platos. It's the one that I forgot that kind of works out, but there is our flag for it right there. So let's fly there and go and grab that one. Uh, as you can tell, I am recording my audio after recording the video for this makes it a little bit easier so that I don't have to focus on what I'm saying and what I'm doing at the same time. I can kind of just narrate what I'm doing, which works a little bit better than other styles of videos in my opinion. Another reason for this style of video is people, my fans, have told me that they prefer uh, the more in-depth versions. I could have done it a lot shorter and just showed you the locations. At the end of the video, there is of course going to be a map of all of the pinpoint locations. It's gonna be on the overworld to give you an idea of where they should be residing there within. But uh, most people seem to prefer the location in conjunction with this is how you get there and more of a guide so they can see exactly what you're talking about. But that was stake number eight. We should be hearing sounds of the seal opening. Yep, and Cory Idon will automatically pinpoint himself directly towards the seal that just opened. So if you're ever at a loss for where the seal is, just after you grab the last stake, Coriodon's going to, or Miraidon, depending on your game, is going to point directly to it. Um, the only area I saw where that is an issue is in the left hemisphere of the map, the, the left side for, I believe it was the yellow or gold, as some people are calling the color, uh, just because the location where I got my last stake was just completely made it a little bit difficult to navigate towards the shrine. But let's go ahead and travel over here to the purple shrine, show you the location for that as well. We're gonna be the southmost point of the south right area pretty much. But now you can see that all of those chains are gone. So we'll be able to open up that seal and battle Wu Xian, the little dark grass snail Pokemon. This is actually my favorite legendary out of the quartet. Um, this ruinous snail, the tablet snail, or the tablet ruinous object. But yeah, I just think this is actually kind of cool. Uh, so we'll go ahead and lob a Pokeball at it and finish out the video. But thank you guys so much for watching. This is the Grass Dark Legendary Wu Xian. Um, and this is how you find all the stakes for its location. We'll catch you guys in a future video, but here in just a moment, I'm gonna show you guys the map. And here it is a map of all of those pin drop locations we went to. Uh, if you kind of center your little beacon, your icon for where you're at on the map, around those you should be able to find them pretty easily. Thanks again for watching guys, I'm Brasscoin, and I'll catch you in another video.